Okay, so you want to know what we're doing? Obviously, we're trading gaps. This is no secret, but how are we doing it? Well, pattern recognition. It's an innate human ability. I would suggest taking advantage of it. That's what we've been doing and what people are picking up on very quickly. So what is an exhaustion gap? Well, if you're accustomed to trading off the open, if you have, uh, you know, if you've traded before AMC and GME, obviously you've been trading or if you've been holding all year long and that's all you've done, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but people that, that have trading experience, you're probably used to trading off the open or you've heard of it. Um, you're probably familiar with morning gaps. What you may not be accustomed to is the gaps that fail and miserably fail that are the exhaustion gaps. They occur at the very end of a trend and it's a telltale sign of an indicator of a reversal. Um, the thing is, is this is commonly traded on micro time frames and due to the liquidity in the market being non-existent and the repo market having insane historic demand and inflation being never higher, asset purchases have been happening on a record basis and everything's inflated. So obviously when that changes, when something changes in the sentiment of the institutions, there's big swings on, on a lot of these plays that I guess no one's paying attention to because we're all tied up in a few stocks in retail. And this is only happening on stocks that retail is not in because retail has liquidity right now. So anyways, um, this type of gap is known as the exhaustion gap. Looking at charts and data for hours upon in, you start to pick up patterns as in a human being. It is an innate ability to pick up patterns. I suggest using it. So example of a GameStop exhaustion gap detectable on a one minute chart. You can see it barely on the one minute with GameStop. There's so much liquidity here, it's hard to find them, but I did find a few examples. This one here, um, the gap down and immediate fill. The, the gap is marked by the yellow oval there. So gap down, immediate fill. Gap down, immediate fill. So it's a little micro, micro trends, right? In the one minute that the algorithm is likely doing. Um, I, I'm not sure if anyone actually trades these on the one minute. That would not be viable in my opinion. Now the 30 minutes different. So we trade sideways. We have a gap. We have a, a fill. And then we have a reversal, right? And then we have another period of consolidation on the 30 minute. You can see here that as soon as it's gapped up in after hours, it traded sideways. It came down a little bit, but not all the way. And then it didn't fill it until this long wicked candle. It actually stuck down literally right to where the gap was. So a lot of the times you see those long wicks. Pay attention. If you look at the bottom of the wick, follow it horizontally, it's likely filling a gap. This is a typical way of trading a bearish exhaustion gap. So the, the way it goes on, uh, this is a 15 minute chart by the way. Um, basically, you have an increase in price. All of a sudden you have an exhaustion gap, right? It gaps up for a bearish exhaustion gap. Then you get the reversal on increasing volume. Now, as soon as the gap occurs, you have low volumes followed by the reversal. This is a bullish example. Obviously, the price goes down, and then at some point, it gaps down. This one is a very, very, very minor example, but oftentimes that's the case in a traditional strategy when you're trading these. After the gap down, you have a minor period of consolidation. This is on the one minute, and then higher volumes and price increase. So in a fragmented market, again, with high repo demand and no liquidity, Obviously, this could be exploited if it were happening on a large scale. So how do you trade this? Basically, you look for gaps, you've, you confirm the validity of the exhaustion gap, and then you open a position. If it's bearish, you short it. If it's uh, bullish, you open a long position. So this is the full, you know, buy to, from open to close, short position, how you would buy one on a five minute traditional strategy. So the price is increasing. You're getting ready to buy. You see the gap up. You get the confirmation, and that's when you sell. Or in the short short sellers, sell means buy. This is when you buy, and then obviously if the price goes down. You get a gap up, and then that's when you're supposed to close. A lot of steps. Um, you know, it's basically buy high, sell low, and you're using the gaps as your way of figuring out when to do so. This is the way I'm doing it. We're expanding upon it, and we're not doing it on micro time scales. We're doing it on the daily, and we're doing it with options. When identifying the plays, if you need a, if you identify a gap down that needs filled, and you want to play in the money calls, make sure price is greater than max pain. If you're identifying a gap up that needs filled, and price is lower than max pain, play in the money puts. 
Once all that is met, make sure the implied volatility is anywhere between 40 to 120%. 120% is pushing it. I'd really like 40 to 100, but if 120 is the only option, I may go for it. It just depends. Look for the open interest. Make sure it all matches. The criteria is met, then you purchase. Once you're purchased and you're holding, likely holding for one to three days surrounding earnings, around high periods of volatility, set a stop loss at 10% just in case, because again, this is options. And when you're holding, all you have to do, timing and indicators, as far as indicators, is it near the 52 week low? Is the RSI oversold on the weekly and daily? Is it above the average volume trading currently? If so, likely uh, you're, you're in good shape. The timing, scale position slowly. When selling, analyze the MACD three and five minute. When buying, analyze the volume analysis for overall sentiment. It's easy, because again, there's no liquidity. So you get like 40% in one price. Very easy to tell what's going on as far as institutional sentiment. By the way, the gaps I'm referring to, they're uh, not on the 30 minute. They're not on the five minute. They're not on the one hour. They're on the daily. And uh, what we're playing off of is the correctional direction that must happen due to the broken technicals that occur due to this shit. So I don't know if you've noticed this pattern already, but if you look at the bottom of the screen on all these charts, that's the RSI. You tell me. <coughs> on the daily. Let's go weekly. Not much better. <clears throat> Take a look for yourself. It's, it's all over the market. This is what we're doing. While obviously buying and holding, but I want to buy and hold more. Because I have a feeling, based on the letter to GameStop, saying that Ryan Cohen himself says he doesn't expect anything until 2023, basically, um, that gives me a whole other year to make more money to buy more GameStop. Hell, maybe even, I might even buy more AMC if the price gets any lower. I mean, Jesus Christ. So, opportunity, man. Let's, uh, that's what we're doing. So, Gaparuni. <laughs>